Hey, happy February 29th, almost said 28th. Today is the last day of February, and so I wanted to hop on here and connect with you one more time before uh, month end. And uh, some of you will remember that's because I am offering a discount to the Prophetic Mentorship Group between um, for the month of February. And so I had a couple new students join, and uh, we had someone join last week, someone joined the week before. Hello, Lizzie Tozer, Connie Smith. Osmond. So, you know, I'm on here a little bit earlier than my usual time because I, the Un Emerging Prophets Ontario School is meeting this evening. So just coming on a little bit earlier, but just wanted to connect with you guys because, wow, we're in this beautiful, exciting season of shift, you know, and um, it's such a time of, <laughs> we're in such a time of birthing, such a time of transition, such a time of excitement, such a time of like stepping into new things that God has for us. And so, you know, but in transition, who likes the hallway of transition, the hallway that waiting, you know, some of us, do you feel like the, uh, the pregnant mother who's overdue? And, you know, I have my moments like that where I'm like, I have been carrying, you know, you feel like you've been carrying this baby and you're just waiting and waiting. And there's this mixture of like excitement for the, you know, and anticipation for what God is going to do and the breaking through. But then there's also that, that sense of like, uh, like for the, you know, nobody likes the, the labor pains, the birth pains, what it takes, you know, going through those contractions in the spirit that are required to push out, you know, that baby. So for those of you who are moms, you know what I'm talking about. I, I don't have children in the natural, but lots of spiritual children, you know, but so we're in this time and you know, it's like, it's this beautiful time of like, of life and freshness and new things. But there is also that like, it's, it's, it's the end of one of one season and the moving into the new. And so I just, you know, I just felt to encourage you, like, if you feel like you are in, you know, some people feel like you're still in the wilderness, like you're still in a winter season. And it seems that things have not quite broken through. I just, you know, I just, it's like, I can hear in the spirit, I can hear the, the sound of spring birds like chirping in the air. And I just hear the Lord say that this, it is springtime. It is springtime. And it is a time where all things are, are, are bursting forth, where the new growth is coming. And so we're in this time, in this transition point. And I released a word, I think it was the beginning of February, just about what God is going to do from February until April. Like he is, We've all heard it's a time of the, you know, it's the year of the open door. It's, it's, there's prophetic words about ascending, but this really, you know, as God has been, he is opening doors and there are doors that are going to be open in the next, you know, I had said February, March, and April that, that get ready, but God is opening, but he is also closing. And so this is a time, you know, some of you, um, you have found yourself in this place, especially in the last in this last month where you have been processing a lot of really deep things. You've been processing even some grief and some things as, as the old is closing out and as the new, the old is being left behind and you're getting prepared to come to these places, you know? And so I just feel like, you know, to, to just remind you that the Lord is giving you this permission to allow yourself to feel and allow yourself to grieve and to process, you know, what is the ending of one era? What is the ending of one season? And as you prepare to move into the next and as you release and as you let go and as you position yourself, you know, where the Lord would have you go, it's just like, I see he's holding us so tightly and it's like our alignments in this season are so vitally important to our forward progress that it's like he is holding us so so tightly. And I just see him with like a father who has such a firm grip on the hand of his children because there has been such a shift in a flux in this season. And, and there's something of, you know, we're really in this time as we're transitioning, you know, when you're in transition, um, there, there's this sense of like what way is up and what way is down. There's, there's a bit of a, a sense of confusion. There's a sense of like, you know, it's like there's the excitement and the joy for what's coming, but then there's the pain 
of, of loss and grief from what's behind. And then there's the like, you know, the, the grieving over what you have to let go of. And so there's this mixture of emotions and there's this mixture of feelings and things that need to be processed and released. And so sometimes what happens you know, is, is it's like, you don't feel, you kind of feel like you don't know which way is up and you don't know which way is down. And so what is really going to be key for people who want to progress and move forward in this season is, um, I, I'm just hearing the scripture. It says there is wisdom in the multitude of counselors. And so community and connection is going to be so important because this is actually a time where, you know, it's so important where we're standing and who we're aligned with. And it is going to be important for us to be able to lean in to trusted friends because, you know, sometimes, you know, especially those of us who are prophetic and hear the voice of God, you know, which we should all be prophetic and we should all hear from God because it's not just for the prophets where, you know, prophets, you know, the prophetic is a, it's a lifestyle. It's a way of living out of the spirit and in communion with him. But, you know, it's like there, there's this caution to be, not be so sure of yourself in this season in certain areas because as you're shifting and transitioning, there is that, there is, I just, I, I see like this, un, there's such an unsettling. And I just, I hear this phrase in the Lord, you know, he's been speaking it to me over months and like saying it to me, to Jenny, like as a, you know, as a, just a reminder to, you know, humble myself and just stay in this place of like, you know, seeking wisdom and guidance, but it is, there is a way that seems right in the eyes of man, but his ways are higher. And so there's this needfulness, you know, there are ways that we think are right. And there are, and I feel this so strongly, there are things that God is asking us to do in this season, things that we're supposed to take hold of, things we're supposed to let go of. And they don't, like, there is this sense of an un ease on the inside of us. And it's really because there, there's these, there's like these cycles that God is breaking. And so there's a time, you know, he's transitioning us, not just out of old situations and circumstances, but also old, old ways of responding. And he's healing the deep places of brokenness and he's healing, you know, our ways, our childish ways, our ways of responding to be, the things that we have learned out of our pain. It's like, it's a reprogramming spiritually. And so he is saying that in this time, we have to humble ourselves because there's wisdom that is needed to move into the next season. And if we are alone, if we are without that counsel and that wisdom, and we don't have those trusted voices speaking into our life, then we will be deceived. We will be, de we, we, we will, we ha have the ability to be deceived in ourselves. And so there is just this time. So we're in this exciting, exciting time, you know, and so grieve the loss, go ahead, let yourself let go, let yourself grieve the loss of the things that are gone the things that you know there's no more life in, the things that you thought would work out one way and they're not, you know? And so there are some things that actually, it's really super um, particularly, it's particularly grie um, you know, grieve, grie I can't think of what that word is, grievous, <laughs> because there are certain things and, and they're good things. There's good things that we have to let go of because, you know, it's like the prophetic is, this is the thing with the, the prophetic. The prophetic is an invitation. The prophetic requires partnership. The prophetic requires people to, you know, partner with the word and to, you know, to play a part, you know. And so some of us, we had directions we were moving in. And, you know, let me know if you can relate this with this, where it's like you knew so clearly that God had aligned you and had wanted you to go in a certain direction, but you can feel the shift and you can feel that he is leading you now in another direction. And I just feel like the Lord wants to like free you up and say, you didn't miss it. It's you didn't miss it, but you weren't the only person. You weren't the only party in, in, in all the, the interactions and, and the way. And so it's like God had plans and he had ways that he wanted you to walk out. And Amanda, I'm so glad. Thank you for your feedback. I'm glad this is resonating with you, but he is shifting things up. He's shifting things up and he is increasing our flexibility and our adaptability in this season. And guys, I like, 
I adaptability was not one of my leadership strengths. It was, man, I was not very adaptable and I was not a risk taker. I really just loved stability and security. And, you know, if I had a plan and I set out to, you know, to, to do something, I did not like, you know, any shift or any flex in, in the plan, but there is a need to be adaptable in this season. And there is a need to hold loosely to the things that you know in a past season God called you to and asked you to, but now all situations and circumstances have shifted and it seemed, you know, and it seems quite obvious that you're moving in a different direction. But there is this, this tension, there is this tension of this season in between. I gotta move, this light is like, I'm gonna see if I can move because this light is gonna be in my face in a second <laughs> as the sun is setting through my bedroom window and shining on the light. But guys, so we need to increase our adaptability. And <laughs> I know I've been like blasting this out like a fire hose. That's just how the knobby flow works in me. But I feel like, guys, take a breath. There's something about today. There's something about today, about February 29th, this leap year day, this extra day, this year that has this extra day tucked in here in February, here in what has been a difficult month, here in what has been a month of transition and shaking and closing of doors and preparation for the new. Yeah, Rachel, it kind of hurts a little. Let it out. He is giving us, he's giving us all permission to feel, to feel the disappointment of the loss of the old season. And just because he's not calling us there anymore and he doesn't want us to stay planted in that place of wilderness that we were in in the last season, it doesn't mean that your feelings are not justified in that it's not needful for you to go through a process of grieving and releasing and letting go. Yeah. <laughs> because in the grief and in, in the releasing and in the shifting into the next, <sighs> he wants us to close, like fully close the door. And it's such a season where striving is not going to get us striving and trying to prove ourselves and trying to be justified and trying to like, you know, push our way forward. Like these striving in these things, you know, they're not going to work in this season. This is a, a supernatural season where the Lord is the one who goes before us and it is the Lord who is going to open the doors and is going to shut the doors. Yeah, Tamara, so much disappointment. It does hurt. It does hurt. But double for your trouble. He is going to give you double for your trouble. And, you know, I can see where... Um, whew, I can see where some of you, you really... Man, you really stuck it out in some hard places. You really stuck it out and you really did what you knew how to do to make things work. And I can see that it's like you did what you knew how to do and it still didn't work out. But I hear the Lord saying, you are only responsible for you having done what you were supposed to do. You are not responsible for the outcome. And so the Lord is wants to release you of your own expectations that you have put on yourself where you've been judging yourself because the outcome wasn't what you expected. He is wanting you to just throw off the disappointment and just let it, let yourself release it and just let yourself just grieve over what was lost and just release all of that because he wants you to move fresh into this new season. Whew. And there were some things that the Lord has asked you know, he had asked us to do, he had pointed us in a direction and, and, and we were so sure and we did hear him, but he has changed his mind about the path forward now. 
He has changed his mind. And some of you are like, how can God change his mind? Like, that's just, just not right. He can. God can do whatever he wanted to do. And he has changed his mind. Wow, and I feel this. He's changed his mind for some of you because he loves you too much to leave you in your situations and in your circumstances that are death to you and your destiny. And he is releasing you. So this day, this day, February 29th, this day, let this be a day of release and a day of letting go and leaping forward into the new thing. There is a place of, there is a time to mourn and there is a time to rejoice. And he says, today is a day to mourn and tomorrow is a day to rejoice. So get ready and to release it because we can't hold on. As long as we keep all of that and hold it on the inside, we won't have the space to receive what is being poured out and there is something being poured out from the heavenly places you know and when we were together the emerging prophets ontario students some of you guys lizzie kayla diane um are on here right now i think maybe i saw angela as well but you you know we were together on saturday and we had a time of like worship and prophetic ministry and there was just i I actually don't remember who it was but there was just like visions and uh, um, prophetic words about like the rivers and the waterfalls and the, the, the flowing of streams. And, and there's just this like, you know, God is pouring out. And I had this, you keep getting this picture of like the river that flows from the throne of God. It talks about the river that flows from his throne and, and, and how there's like fruitful trees on, on all sides and the leaves of the trees are for healing. But the Lord gave me this vision, um, you know, before coming into this year about, you know, this, these new, these new Holy Spirit, like propelled cycles that he was launching us into in our life. And they were fueled by those rivers that come, that flow forth from the throne of God. And so it's like, there are these heavenly rivers that are coming. And I just saw these waterfalls. There's waterfalls that are just pouring out and God wants to pour in and he's going to pour in so much inside of you. And, and, and it's like, he needs our capacity to be completely open to receive what is coming. Yeah. Some of you, (laughs) some of us, we were so comfortable in our little, I just see these little trees. We were so comfortable in our little trees and our little pots and our little environments and our little ecosystem, spiritually speaking. And we just, we got used to it and we were thriving there and we just like, we wanted to stay in that place, but it's time to be transplanted. It's time to be transplanted. And the Lord said, because it is, you know, we have our influence first in our, you know, in Jerusalem and then Judea and then to the outermost parts. And it's like, you've been faithful in your Jerusalem and in your, in your place there. And now the Lord is increasing and now it's time to, it's that expansion. He's, he's increasing you. And so no longer, he doesn't want you to continue to feel like a big fish in a small pond that doesn't fit and doesn't belong, but he is going, he's transplanting many of us into places and he is expanding and increasing because this is a time for the remnant to rise. You have been like that kernel of wheat and that goes it says unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies and is buried it remains alone and you have felt that you died you have felt this death you have felt this and it's time it is time for that life to to burst up and to come to fullness and fruition. There is an incorruptible seed of the word of God. That is your prophetic destiny. He has written about you from the foundation of the world. And it is time for the things that have been written for you to come into fulfillment. And so the Lord needs us to be in this place of allowing him to align us and shift us and change us and and let go of some relationships and get up from certain 
certain tables. And I just see this. I see this grief over losing our place at the table. There is this grief because we had a place at the table and we wanted it and we wanted to sit and we wanted to fellowship and we wanted to eat in certain places. But he says, I am rescuing you from those places and those tables. And I am removing you from rooms and conversations and places that you have desired to have a place of, of impact and, 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 and to have a voice into you. And I am setting new tables for you. And this is what I said at the beginning of February. I don't know how many of you guys heard that word, but from February to April, you're going to be surprised at the new tables that the Lord sets before you and that he invites you into. Let go so that you can release. And I just see this, like, are you like this, like this clenched? God, I want my way. God, I'm holding on to this because you told me that this was where I was supposed to go. You told me that this is what I was supposed to do. And I just see some of it. And this is such a test because guys, some of us are like, you know, you're like a spiritual bulldog. And when you know that God spoke something to you, you don't want to let it go. But the Lord says, I have changed the plan and I have changed my mind. And it is time to let go and to open your hands and to allow me to remove. He's removing from your hand things that he even put in your hand because the time is past. And what was good in the last season is not the best for you in this season. And he says, do you want what is good or do you want the best? Because he wants you to have the best. Yeah. So open wide your hands. Open wide your hands. Yeah. Who? Guys, (laughs) it's okay. It's okay to grieve. It's okay. It's okay to mourn over the last season. It's okay to feel. It's okay to be disappointed. It's okay to hurt. Some of you are so heartbroken. And he says, just give it to me. Just give me the pain and the disappointment and all of that. Just hand it over to me and trust me. That what I am taking you into in this next season is going to be, it's the Ephesians 3.20, exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or imagine. And as you're letting go, and as you're handing, as you're releasing, and you're giving him the grief, and you're giving him the pain, and you're giving him the disappointment, and all these things that, that have just been so, that you've been navigating, as you give it, and as you feel, there is this beautiful moment in this time, this little, this time of grief and release, there is this moment where you can offer him this most precious gift, which is a sacrifice of praise. And so there is a blessing that you can offer up to him by feeling all that you're feeling, all the pain, all the disappointment, all the like letting go of the old and praise him and lift up a song and lift up and worship him. And sometimes guys, you just have to, you just have to I hope we're still here. I just got a weird message on my phone. <laughs> Oh, you just have to lift up your hands and you just have to praise him. And you just have to worship him even in the midst of the confusion. Even when you're lacking clarity. Because guys, (laughs) the sun is going to rise. The sun is rising and it's getting higher and higher but it's like in the light and when the sun is shining and there is this clarity and you just know, just you can see in the distance, you know, that's one thing that's like, I mean, we all like that, but there is this time where it's like, we feel like we're groping around in darkness. It's the dark nights of the soul where you are just like, you're not sure, but you're doing your best to lean into him in these times, these times where there isn't that same sense of clarity. There is, you know, that you're 
father sees and he knows and he's so pleased because he sees your diligence and your intentionality as you're just trying your best to navigate forward. <sighs> yeah. So good. So good. Now the sun is actually really shining in my window and I'm getting all these like, I don't know if I can change directions here. I might try this. I might try this. I don't know. I don't know if this is, this might be a little bit <laughs> better. Um, or I'm getting blinded. I don't really like this angle either. But, you know, there is this beautiful opportunity for us to, you know, really seek him, really press in. Yeah. Yeah. Because the new tables that he is setting, I know I focused a lot on what, what we're letting go, what's behind. <laughs> oh, but do you know what's coming? Do you know what's coming? All those prophetic promises that were on the shelf, those words that were released over you and that you felt like, you know, there's no way that this could come to pass, that this could come to fruition. All those things that God has spoken, they are in your future. And they're not as far off as you would seem. Oh, Kayla, I love that. You've, you've had dreams about new tables. I've had, I've had several dreams about new tables. Dreams about new tables, but in the dream, uh, I really, I felt just the pain of the loss of the old table. And God shifting to the new. You know, because guys, who doesn't like what is familiar, what is comfortable, you know, the place of like, you know, feeling known, feeling like you have a space, but God is bringing us into new places and there are new tables, but the Lord, you know, <laughs> our God is a good God. And so anything, there is any, there's nothing that you are letting go of, nothing that is lost. There is nothing that is behind you in this season that the Lord is not going to bring back increase and better and double and multiply back to you. But in a different form, in a different form. Yeah. And I know some of you feel like Job, you know, and Job, it seemed like he lost everything and everyone. But at the end of his story, he got it all back, multiplied back, multiplied back. God is not just going to replace. And where the enemy stole, we know there's scriptures where it's a fourfold rec, um, restitution. There's some where it says it's a sevenfold. So it's multiplied back. Yeah. Bigger and better tables. Yes, Michelle. Bigger and better tables. And tables where, yeah. 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 And it's like, I just, tables where the people that you're sitting with will really feel like, you know, you've been cut from the same cloth. And there's this thing because everybody wants to fit in. Everybody wants to find their place. And some, some of you, you've been looking like, where's home? Where's home? This doesn't feel like home. And you felt like your whole life you've been running and you've been, I'm going to move again. You've been running and you've been trying to find the place. You've been trying to find your home. You've been trying to find your family and everywhere you go, it has just felt like more, you know, but as we release and as we let go, there is, God is like, he is, he is so healing our hearts. And I see the spirit of adoption resting on people in this season in an incredible way and in a way that we haven't experienced in the past, in a way where there is this, you know, this so, this sense of like love and acceptance and this like, I am living out of this place of acceptance so that I don't have to, it, it, no more striving, no more performing, no more trying to earn favor with, you know, with people, with God, just but knowing that 
you know, we are his favored children, that each and every one of you, that he loves you so much that he has paid the highest price, that the blood of Jesus covers you. Jesus paid for you and your value is determined by the greatest price that was ever paid. And it's just that blood. It's like every drop of the blood of Jesus that was shed was for you. And it was for me and it was for our freedom. Yeah. So be excited for the shift. So let it go. Give yourself permission. Go get your box of Kleenex. Have your time. Have your time with God and release out everything that you need to release so that you don't carry it into the next season because, wow, there is there is a need to be unhindered and, um, you know, uh, it, there needs to be a lightness for this next season. Like he's been increasing us, expanding us, increasing our, our weight, spiritually speaking, like he's increased it, in that way, but he's also like, you know, so spiritually he's increasing us, but he's also uncluttering and he's removing baggage and there's things. I just, I saw this thing in a dream of like, of, of, I was go actually I had a dream going to the airport. I was going to the airport and um, driving through this muddy, muddy road. It was so thick and I just like could hardly, but I was on the path even though it was slow and I was trudging through the mud, but I was going to the airport, but I didn't have my baggage and I couldn't go back and get the baggage, the luggage. And there was this thing that it's like, we have to just stay on these courses, even that seem like they're trudging and they're difficult to navigate. We have to get there because it is time to take off. It is time to let go, to leave the luggage, to leave the baggage behind and to move forward because it is a launching time. Yeah, it is. It is. So get ready to leap to take that big leap forward in these next two months and just watch and see as the Lord sh shocks you and surprises you with his goodness. He's just going to surprise you. He's going to run you down with his goodness, with his love. He is just crazy about you. And this is our time. This is our time of victory. This is our time of advancement. This is our time of maturing and stepping into those things that have seemed unfulfilled for so long. You know, and, and on one hand, it has felt like, oh, that's so long. Why is it so difficult and, you know, so long in coming? But on the other hand, I just see us on the other side. And so it's like, there's been this impatience and this agitation where we're like, wow, it's like taking so long. Why is this not worked out? But then on the other side of it, there's this sense of like, wow, God did things much more quickly and he's brought about so much more than we ever could have done, you know, striving in our own. And so I just, just, I, I exhort you to just press in and to be patient in this season and to be patient in the waiting, even though, you know, it seems, you know, we're always eager to get things, especially me. I am a pioneer and I, I'm just like, so when I, I am in these times of trudging through mud and going in these roads where it's like, you just feel like you're in quicksand and you can't get anywhere fast. It is like, it feels frustrating, but like patience, just patience and stay the course. We just need to stay the course and, you know, have community, have healthy relationships because there is wisdom. I said this earlier, there is wisdom in the multitude of counselors and we can't be alone and we can't trust our own, uh, our own um, ideas and perceptions. We, we have to, you know, have input from outside because there is you know, there has been confusion and there has been a lack of clarity and there has been a testing and there's even been a shifting in the way that God is wanting to do things. And so, you know, hold loosely the things that God told you in the last season and, and open up your heart to the possibility that in this season, there could be a different way forward than what was previously spoken to you. So I just, I bless you. I just encourage you to just keep going on, just keep going on. There is strength 
for the journey and just be brave and be courageous and step out into the things that God has for you. But be kind to yourself. Be so kind to yourself. Yeah. Because you've been on a hard road. You've been on a hard road and you've made mistakes, but you, you are just doing the absolute best that you know how. And your father is not disappointed with you. He's so pleased with you. He's so, so pleased with you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, guys, thanks for the feedback. Just want to say hello to some of you guys. Jill, Joanna, Tolly, Lily, Mil Millie Hale, where are you from? Are you from the UK or South Africa? Sherry Gaither, Dina Dina, Kara Welk, Kayla Lopez, Lizzie Tozer, Tamara Bali. So good to see you guys. Ruth, Dami. Yeah, coming on earlier and I got was able to connect with some of you from the UK. I know usually I come on around seven o'clock in the evening and it is like the middle of the night or midnight for you guys, which is a little bit difficult, but um, I did, you know, so I wanted to really come on today because this is the last day for the discount that I was offering for the prophetic mentorship group that I run. So if there are any of you who have been sitting on the fence, I've had a couple new students join one this one uh, this past week and another one the week before. It's so good to have like new people come in. And, um, you know, I love, I'm passionate about the prophetic. I'm passionate not just about being a voice for God, but also raising up voices for God. And so, you know, prophets are equippers. And so I want to, you know, it's not what I want, but God's heart, God's heart is to have sons and daughters prophesy, not just prophets, but, you know, prophecy is a gift of the spirit. It is a tool. It's a gift that is available to each and every one of us. And so we should all desire not to just run to the prophet for a word from God, but to be in that place of intimacy and connection with him where you can hear him. And so I love, I, we teach so many, you know, different different topics in the mentorship group pertaining to how to hear the voice of God, how to, you know, to, to learn, you know, the ways that you hear, the different ways that he speaks, how to sense and perceive him. God's, you know, through all of our senses, through sight, through sound, through smell, through touch, through taste, every, every different way, you know, every sense that we have in the natural, there's a spiritual parallel and just how to be connected with heaven and to grow, you know, and, and, and to be a person of his presence, you know, I'm a prophet of his presence. And, you know, even the flow, um, the flow of the word today, I just step out in faith. I really didn't have anything. Um, <laughs> I really didn't have anything. When I get on here, I just am like, okay, God, you know, there's things that he's been depositing over time, but I don't plan this out. It's just like, God, what do I feel like you want me to release? And it's like out of the overflow, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. And so, you know, it's what a true, true prophets. We always talk about what's a true prophet. What's a false prophet. You know, look at the fruit, the fruit of their life, the fruit of their ministry. I want to like, you know, draw you to him, draw you into deeper relationship with God, into intimacy. You know, Jesus is the only access point to the spirit realm. And so I, you know, I know that there are so many people out there who are prophetically gifted, who, who can hear, who have an ability to tap into spiritual information. You know things that you feel like you shouldn't know. Sometimes you have your moments where you think that you're psychic, you know, because of the information that you're picking up and the church has not had answers for you. And it's almost some of you have felt like, you know, you, you felt like you were like a witch or like you had to like leave the traditional church because they didn't understand you and they didn't understand how God wired you and the gifting, you know? And so sometimes we have these beautiful and these powerful gifts that God gives us. But you know, if we're not rightly aligned and connected, those gifts can get anointed by the wrong spirit. And so, it, you know, and it's just the wrong spirit can get us out of true prophecy into false prophecy. And so I want to teach people about how to make sure you're tapped into the, you know, the right spirit. Jesus is the only permissible access point. And so, you know, I love prophets are foundation layers. And so want to lay strong healthy new covenant foundations, um, both in my EP school, Emerging Prophet School and in this prophetic mentorship group. So 
I know that there are people who have been tracking with me. You've been tracking with me for a while and it's time to get off the fence and to jump into the mentorship group. It's time. Throw aside your objections. Throw aside. Stop holding yourself back and just say yes. Some of you are lonely. You're lacking community. You feel misunderstood. You don't have healthy mentors or people who are nurturing you know, you and your ability to hear the voice of God. And so jump in. Invest in yourself because you are worth it and join the mentorship group. So I would love to have some of you guys come on in. Come on in. It is time. I have students in my group from, you know, from Germany, from Newfoundland, from British Columbia, Hawaii, throughout the United States, throughout Canada, you know, so it's not just for a certain place, but I would love to connect and, um, you know, maybe if I get enough international students, I'll, um, you know, shift to a earlier time to help accommodate some of you. That's something I've been thinking about lately, but you know, I want to you know, just see us keep moving forward strong because God is raising up a powerful army in these days. So if you are not connected, if you don't feel like you are empowered, if you don't feel like you have a voice, some of you guys have just felt so locked up. God wants to empower you and he wants to release your voice. So this is a great way to break your partnership with silence and to step in and say, I will pay a price. I will invest in myself. I will give of my time and I will learn and grow in this. So I want to invite you to come on in. You can come in at any time, but today is the last day to get the discount of $444 for the mentorship group. So really appreciate you guys tuning in and thank you for your patience as I was, you know, adjusting my light and my position in here. And um, anyway, I really appreciate you guys. Have a great night. And for my Emerging Profits Ontario students, I will see you at 7 p.m.